All right, my darlings. I like this lesson. I don't know what it is. I just think it's very practical to like learn how to read decimal numbers and it's pretty manageable. So we're looking at like, hey, how much do the strawberries weigh? How would I say that number? That's what we're learning today. So we can use a place value chart to help us identify the value of each digit. So we know what place they're in and the value is how much are they worth? So this you're gonna be writing on your notes. So the value of the three is in the tens place, excuse me, sorry, is three tens, which is the same as 30. Its value is 30. So write that on your notes. That one might seem easy, but it'll help when we get to the decimals. In the value of the four in the ones place, well, if I have four ones, its value is four, right? That one's pretty easy. Notice we're adding on six in the tenths place. Its value is six tenths. Go ahead and write that on your notes. You don't need this last period because that's just like the period of the sentence. It's just 0 0.6. What is the value of the one in the hundredth place? Well, it's one hundredth. One hundredth. Again, that last period is just like the sentence period. So one hundredth. And then the value of the eight in the thousandths place is eight thousandths. So then once we have all those numbers together, that is what your paper should look like underneath all the arrows. We can use this to write what we call expanded form. So on your notes where it says we can use the value of each digit to write the decimal in expanded form. It's where we just write each value separately with pluses in between. Pause if you're still writing that out. Oh, there we go. So we can also write expanded form using fractions. We've talked about how six tenths as a decimal is the same thing as like six over 10. So if we wrote it in expanded form with fractions, it would look like this. So go ahead, write that on your notes so you have an example of it. We can also write expanded form in fractions like this. And then you'll have the expanded form that will match uh, the or the fraction expanded form to match the decimal expanded form. 30 plus 4, those are the same. Then we have 6 tenths, 1 hundredth, and 8 thousandths. So again, splitting it up by place, but just writing them as fractions instead of decimals. So standard form is like normal, how we write it with digits and a decimal. So on your notes, writing it with digits and a decimal is called standard form. So expanded is all the places, standard is like normal with numbers. So if we were gonna write that number in standard form that we we're talking about, we would write it as, just 34 and 618 thousandths, 34.618. We just put all the numbers together. The last form we write words in is called word form. So on your notes where it says blank is writing it in words like how we say it, that is word form. So if you think, how would I read this number? And then just write all the words for that. That's called word form. So if we had it as like 34, the words, and 618 thousandths. So the steps for how we know how to read it, because you might be wondering, well, I don't know how to read the number. First, we read the whole number. Number one should say whole number. Read the whole number first. 
Then number two, read the decimal point using the word and. And then number three is to read the decimal part as if it were a regular number. And then we say the place it ends in. So I don't say like six tenths, one hundredth, eight thousandth. I would just say 618, and then it ends in the thousandths place. So that's what I, the place I say. Kind of like when we read whole numbers and we read it in groups, we do the same thing for decimals. We would say 618, and then we say thousandths because that's where it ends. If it ends in the hundredths, we would say hundredths. If it ends in the tenths, we would say tenths. If it ended in the ten thousandths, because it kept going, we would say ten thousandths. Because if you haven't noticed, the decimal places are just reverse of the whole places, just with that TH on the end. So instead of going ones, tens, hundreds, thousandths, we go ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, etc., etc. All right? So let's wrap up and then we'll do some practice. So again, 34 and 618 thousandths. That would be the word form. I'm just writing down the words for what I say. If you ever have to write the word form, just know, spell it the best you can. I don't expect you to spell all the words correctly. All right. Why do you think it's important to include and? You might be saying, eh. I say and in my whole numbers, which technically we shouldn't. Like we don't say 618, 618. Lots of adults do that. Technically, we only say with a decimal, just to be clear that like whole number versus the part. Just for clarity's sake. So we can read it in expanded form. Or we can write in expanded, standard, and word form. So different ways to... Write the words just like with whole numbers. No difference. All right. You can also do it using multiplication, which is a little weird. But this would just mean eight tenths, and that would just mean three hundredths. It's like eight groups of a tenth, three groups of a hundredth, so just eight tenths and three hundredths, which eight tenths and three hundredths does match. Now let's do some practice. I'm going to do a number of different practice ones on this because I think just the repetition will help. So, thank you, Simon. What is the word form of the decimal? Go ahead and pick. All right, hopefully you picked the one that said eight and two tenths. Yes. And again, spelling... Okay, sorry, my computer freaked out on me because it was a little battery for a second. I guess I better hurry up. Um, anyway, eight and two tenths. Read the whole number, decimal, um, and the decimal, or decimal point, and, and then the decimal part. This one, go ahead and pick. All right, eight and two. This time it's in the hundredths place. Because remember, ten, hundreds, thousands. All right, nice. Next one. I'm going to slow today. It's okay, I know you're being patient. What is the word form? Well, this time we don't have any holes, so we don't actually have to say zero and. Um, we can just say the decimal part. So we could just say it like a normal number, but then say what place it ends in. It ends in the hundredths place. Okay, so if you thought maybe it'd be zero, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong, it's just not needed. Number four. All right, so actually it's the same number, right? We still have, well, go ahead and pick, sorry. All right, we still have 82. Now we just end in the thousandths place instead, because remember it's tens is the zero, then hundredths, then thousandths. Tenths, hundreds, thousands. Repeat it over and over. Just say it in your sleep and you'll get it. 
Knowing that order is really important so you don't get mixed up about which one is which. All right, what is the standard form of this decimal? One thing that can be helpful is to write blank. So if I see, okay, it starts here, and then I know I'm going to need some going over. Well, I can say, okay, 9 goes in that spot, 3 goes 2 over, 7 goes 3 over. Ooh, that is not a 7. I don't know what happened there. That can just help if sometimes there's missing ones where we have to put a zero. So knowing that like drawing those dashes can help me catch the ones that might have a zero in them. We go zero and nine, 37. Very good. All right. So what is the standard form of the decimal? All right, well, I know I see a 20 and I don't see any other whole numbers, so I know I'm just gonna have 20. And then I see, okay, seven is in the tenths. Do I have anything in the hundredths? Yep, eight is in the hundredths. Anything in the thousandths? Yep. So again, I know I didn't have any zeros. If it skipped from just the tenths to the thousandths, I would need to put a zero in the hundredths. Look at us go. What is the standard form of the decimal? All right, well, I see a five, and then my decimal, because it's in the ones place. Tenths, ooh, there's nothing in the tenths place. So I need to put a zero, because that one needs to end up in the hundredths, and then the nine in the thousandths place. So just pay close attention. If it skips a place, you gotta put the zero in there. All right, now we have one with fractions, but again, we just write, we can still write it as a decimal. We wouldn't try and like squish the fractions together. So go ahead and choose. All right, I have a whole number. Then four tenths goes in the tenths. Hundredths, no hundredths. So then five needs to go in the thousandths place. Excellent, just four more. We're getting there. 93 and six thousandths. What is the decimal in standard form? and then expanded form. All right, well, standard form, we have 93 and, so I know that's what it's gonna be because the whole number, when I see that and is where I put my decimal, six thousandths. Hmm, well, if I put it here, that's the tenths. There is the hundredths, so I need to put another zero to get it in the thousandths. And then expanded form, I have to just put every place with a plus. Let's see, hopefully it wants the spaces. Sometimes it's a little finicky how I write it. Here's our six. Nice, there we go. All right, three and 846 thousandths. Choose the one that has the correct standard and expanded form. All right, hopefully you chose the one that was three and 846 thousandths. Okay, 846 tenths. Hundredths, thousandths, and in the right spot. What is the decimal in expanded form? So I just need to put each place. There's my old number. There's my tenths. There's my hundredths. I don't know why I put a nine, should be four. And there is my thousandths. And if any of these, if you're feeling confused, just ask for help. All right, these last two are actually the same, so I'm going to skip those. If you need more practice, let me know, and we can definitely do more practice. Good luck.